What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video. I have a very fun video for today. We're talking about an old classic attack strategy that's making a comeback and why you should look to use it. Um, this is the P.E.K.K.A. Bobat attack featuring our old friend, the Wall Wrecker. We'll talk about why the Wall Wrecker is perfect for this attack strategy because um, we haven't seen a whole lot of it lately. It's making a comeback and these are really crushing it at Town Hall 11. Um, and We'll talk about some other Town Hall levels maybe you could use this at as well, um, but Town Hall 11 is definitely going to be the main one. Um, this attack really crushed it in this war. We'll take a look at multiple replays showing it. You can see coming through here with the, uh, the main push and then going to use that jump spell to get all the way through the base, really carving out a huge part of it, and that bat spell is going to sweep around and clean up kind of the outer ring of the base. Now the reason this is so good at Town Hall 11 is because you have the same amount of spell space as you do at Town Hall 12 or 13, but you don't have that third Inferno Tower, you don't have the scatter shots that you do at Town Hall 13. So really, um, you're able to bring the same number of, of bat spells, um, but there's less of that air targeting splash that can really kill the bats quickly um, that we see at the higher Town Hall levels. So it's definitely the best uh, bang for your buck, so to speak, in terms of the spells against the defensive quality. And the reason the Wall Wrecker is so effective is because it frees up um, having to use a jump spell, um, at least multiple jump spells. Sometimes you don't even have to use one jump spell, which allows you to still bring a Rage or two for your uh, kill squad th through the base um, and still be able to bring those bat spells because it's a very spell intensive attack. So the Wall Wrecker is going to free you up um, from having to bring jumps or earthquakes or anything to help you get through the base, uh, which is really helpful. You are limited, of course, by what side you can enter because the wall wrecker has to come opposite the town hall, but you can make it work on a lot of bases. It's not going to work on every base, but you'd be surprised how many bases it will work on, and uh, these replays are going to be perfect examples because um, you might not have at first thought to use this attack um, on this type of base. We're also seeing a lot of e-drag funnels. Um, funnels are very, very important for this attack because there's so much going into the base. A lot of your success relies on uh, if you can get all those bowlers and pekkas into the base properly. So you can see e-drag funnel on one side, king on the other. Uh, it's a great combination. King is def uh, definitely a good thing to use to funnel because you don't want your healers locking onto the king. You want them on the pekkas they actually get more value healing the P.E.K.K.A.s than the King. I think the King actually might come into the base here uh, on this attack. Actually, no, he's going to walk, which is actually probably better. Um, the King does a great job funneling. Doesn't necessarily help as much inside the base, so use him to funnel, typically. Anyway, um, typical army composition, three, four P.E.K.K.A.s, um, seven, eight bowlers, um, maybe a little more than that, depending on your troop space and just coming through with the wall wrecker, everything behind it. Um, the funnel has to be good because the wall wrecker takes a little bit longer than obviously a jump spell to, to open up these walls. So you, you gotta make sure your troops aren't gonna retarget if the wall isn't immediately open in front of them. But you'll see how deep the wall wrecker really gets here through the base. If you get it in that warden's ability, it's even more uh, beneficial because it'll stay up that much longer. Um, it's gonna actually just go ridiculously far through the base here, guys all the way to the uh, very outer defenses on the back end. Still a bunch of P.E.K.K.A.s up, your bowlers will t probably die, that's pretty common. Uh, but if the healers stay up, they will definitely keep the P.E.K.K.A.s and your queen and typically your warden alive. Then this outer ring probably could have used an ice golem or two to be honest, but has plenty of spell space, so there's not even a need to. Um, no jump spell was used on this base because the wall wrecker opened up. I mean, you can count it here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of walls, just ridiculous. Um, has an extra free spell, doesn't even need to be deployed. Uh, just, just shows how the wall wrecker really opens up a wealth of spells that typically you're, you know, ha figuring out how am I gonna make this work with the spells I have. Town Hall 11, use the wall wrecker, you have plenty of spells to get it done on the back end with that, uh, that bat wave. So anyway, we'll go ahead and fast forward, take a look at two more attacks here. As far as Town Hall 12 and 13, a lot of my viewers are those Town Hall levels. Um, it is more difficult, obviously, because you're introducing 
um, an additional Inferno Tower and at Town Hall 13, the scatter shots, although you do have a lot of multi or a lot of single targeted Infernos, which can offset that a little bit. Um, I would say that if if the base is set up right, it can still work. The Wall Wrecker is going to get taken out a lot quicker because um, it's still a level 3 Wall Wrecker, but it's going up against a lot more damage typically. So it's going to be trickier to really get through the base um, as much as you can at the lower Town Hall level, that is Town Hall 11 or even Town Hall 10. Um, but if the base is, is good for it, if the splash is all able to be taken out, um, you know, go for it. It, it, it really depends on the base, um, but it is going to definitely have a higher success rate at Town Hall 11. We can see this next attack once again going big with the E-Drag uh, funnel there, really making sure everything is um, taken out on those sides because there's a lot of uh, opportunities otherwise for the troops to not go into the base. But one thing that's great about the Wall Wrecker is even if um, a lot of your troops don't go in, it has its own CC troops inside of it. So you, you can guarantee at least some troops are going to be dropped in the core of the base, taking out typically Inferno Towers or other damage that needs to go down in order for the bats to be successful on the back end. Has that jump spell? Um, honestly, maybe didn't need it, although it's going to let a lot of P.E.K.K.A.s in, uh, deeper in the base, so I think it maybe was a good decision. Oftentimes, people underestimate the wall wrecker and bring a jump they don't need, but for this one, it was pretty far into the base, and it opens up some of those adjacent compartments that the wall wrecker wasn't quite able to. Um, you can see that the king, the P.E.K.K.A.s, a lot of that's going to stay up because the healers do a great job, especially under Rage, keeping those high HP troops alive. So the bats come through, most of this is being tanked, and has those three free spells um, just going to destroy this base. We will fast forward here. You can see, you know, both Infernos in the back end of the base, you wouldn't typically think I can do a wall record push and get the value I need to do this attack, but... Even if the Infernos are opposite the base, even if there's you know plenty of Wizard Towers, take a look at this base one more time, guys. Um, one thing you'll notice is the Wizard Towers are kind of by the Infernos. Never do that with base building, especially at Town Hall 11. Do not put your Wizard Towers right next to your multi-Infernos. Um, it's a recipe for getting hit by a bat spell attack and getting wrecked like that. But you know, even this base, check it out. Um, we have back-end multi-Infernos. Sorry, my voice a little bit. Um, <clears throat> scratchy here but we have back end multi infernos plus two wizard towers now one of them is touching uh the inferno uh or it's within the same freeze radius but that's a lot of splash on the back end um this wizard tower can't even be tanked by an ice golem you wouldn't think oh what a great base to push the opposite side and use bat spells on the back end but it still can work and let's take a look at how uses the king with healers on him to kind of keep him alive as he creates the funnel and tanks not a bad idea. Like I said, the king isn't always the best to put in the base, um, but he can be helpful, and it's definitely gets some good value keeping the healers on him so he doesn't lose his hit points too fast. Everything pushing through, E-Drag creates the funnel on the other side. Once again, shout out to the E-Drag. Does a great job creating a lot of these funnels. And you'll see, in a push through, knows the wall wrecker at least, if not other troops, and yet a lot of P.E.K.K.A.s are going to get all the way to those multi-infernos. Now the eagle actually doesn't go down, it's not in the immediate path of the push through the base, so the bats are going to be deployed almost the same place that the uh, troops were, which is interesting, and then he's just going to freeze that uh, wizard tower. So really what the bats are doing is just taking out what the, the other troops don't. And it doesn't always have to be about getting what's opposite of the base. Um, sometimes it's taking out the like peripheral defenses, which in this case was the eagle and these defenses over here. Um, now, definitely difficult to freeze a lot of that splash on the back end. Was able to get those multi infernos down, and then the queen helps out with that wizard tower. So really, it's not always as bad as it looks on the back end of the base. Once you get your queen and some pekkas back there, once you get those free spells down, and just know that it's not always immediate death as soon as the inferno locks on your bats, especially if it has other targets that are tanking it, and it only has a couple free um, targets, not the full five. It'll take a little while for all the bats to die if you have a big bat wave coming. So. Don't you know, freak out too much. The wizard towers don't always uh, directly connect with their target. So um, you have a little more leeway than you might think. But check it out, guys. These P.E.K.K.A.s are really difficult to kill with the healers on them. All four of them still alive. Um, this is a very powerful attack. Look to use it even against bases that you might not have thought of uh, typical candidates for this 
attack strategy. Um, that'll do it, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to enter the creator code BISECT, as you see on the right side of the screen, and maybe re-enter it, even if you thought you did already, because it does reset every once in a while, uh, thanks to Supercell. <laughs> Hopefully, that'll get updated at some point. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.